Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door, and he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. Unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above him, and they had broken. Th and after they had broken through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, "Child, your sins are forgiven." Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, "Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming." who but God alone can forgive sins. Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking to themselves, and he said, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, pick up your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth? He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your mat, and go home. He rose, picked up his mat at once, and went away in the sight of everyone. And they were all astounded and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Interesting, uh, in St. Mark's Gospel, which is one of the earliest, of course, uh, Gospels, that uh, as they describe Jesus returning to Capernaum, they describe it as his home. That he'd been there enough to where it was his home. That is the beginning of the call to faith, I think, for each of us. Uh, that he is at home with us, and we are at home with him. because what follows is even more important. Um, because often we approach God with our prayers and our petitions and we have uh, a sense of sometimes even shaking the gates of heaven, if you will. Um, and in the end, each of those moments becomes a call to faith, to believe, and to be open to God working in our lives. Thus, the whole discussion of the, the men with the paralytic and uh, uh, Jesus saying to that person, child, your sins are forgiven. Now imagine hearing that ourselves, personally. And one of the gifts we have, of course, is in the Sacrament of Reconciliation Confession. We get to hear that every time we go to confession. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, the challenge, though, is the scribes were expecting a certain thing to happen, and it didn't happen in the way they expected. That happens to us, too. That's really where the gospel really hits. If we really let Jesus in our home of faith, then we're open to him in whatever way he's going to act. And it may not be in the way we think he's going to act, especially. And yet the miracle of the healing of the paralytic that happened in the gospel is the same miracle that happens in our lives. So we hear Jesus saying to us, I say to you, rise, pick up your mat, and go home. And he rose, <coughs> picked up his mat at once in the sight of everyone.
Let's pray for that grace during the Eucharist.